Today I'm going to talk about buttons, tactiles, and switches. And these are all examples of buttons or tactiles. Um, they kind of go by both names. And these are two examples of switches. And I use these in a variety of projects such as the clock, the dice, the pong game, and the nightlight. And I actually use a switch to make it so I don't have to get so many connectors and I actually this switch just has positive and negative on the back so that I don't have to use so many USB connectors. So before I get started I want to explain a little bit about what's going on inside of a switch. And in order to do that I'm just going to use a simple circuit. So basically you have a battery, positive and negative, with the red being positive and the black being negative, a resistor, and an LED. And what's going on in a switch is there's basically a piece of conductive material, like a metal wire, which allows electrons to flow in one position, like this, just like plugging it in, or not flow because it's disconnected in the other position. So we can see that if we plug in a button that when it's pushed the LED is on because the wire is connected and when it's released the light turns off. And the same is true of the switch. So if we plug in the switch and then we have to move the resistor but when it's off it's disconnected and when it's on it's connected. So basically we can just think of a switch or a tactile as a little piece of wire. But when you're looking at a schematic, they look like this. So they're drawn in a variety of ways where you always have your wire and somehow it's disconnected, sometimes with a little T-shape for the button to be represented, sometimes not. So in many applications, like the lighting in your apartment, or in your house, the switches are just an on-off. So they're not telling a device to change a state. But clearly with the dice shield and with all these other electronics and this nightlight shield, when you push the button it changes color. So something's happening more than just on-off. Or in this case with the dice, when you push the button, a number's being changed. So in that case, basically, pushing the button indicates to the electronics inside that the state of something needs to be changed. And in order to do that, you need some kind of input connected to the button. But it's not just sufficient to take this circuit and attach a wire, so for example, you might initially think that what you should do is take your switch and connect your wire like this and then just, you know, have your sensing switch like this is your Arduino or your microcontroller just connected. But the problem is when you push this button in that case, it will create a short, which is really bad. So you need to have something like a resistor involved. But then where does that resistor go? And this is where pull up and pull down resistors come in. And they're drawn in a couple of ways. Usually you'll see them in this schematic, but sometimes you also see them in this way. Depending on in books when they're trying to save space, sometimes they draw them this way, but usually this is the preferred way to draw them. And in a pull-up resistor, basically, you have your voltage on this side, and then a resistor, and then a pin for your microcontroller connected, and then the switch, and then ground. So when the switch is open, or the button isn't pressed, the input is high. But when the switch is connected, 
the input is low. And this prevents a short because no matter what, this resistor is in place. With the pull-down resistor, the opposite is true. So when the switch is open or the button is open or the tactile isn't pressed, um, the input of the Arduino or the microcontroller is connected directly to ground, well, connected through this resistor to ground. And then if the switch is thrown or the button is pressed, it's connected to the input. So there's one other thing that you might notice with some of my designs and other designs that you come across when you're looking online for PCBs that other people have designed. Because sometimes people connect the switch directly to two pins. Basically, in the case of an Arduino, sometimes you see this. And so how does that work? Well, basically, within an Arduino, well, in in the microcontroller that's on the Arduino, this can be optionally connected by describing it with, or, or calling the right function, assigning it the right values. will automatically connect these two parts to the input pin, and that's called an input pull-up. So your Arduino code in that case is gonna look like this where you assign the button to some value with a constant integer, and then in your setup code, you write pin mode, button, and then input, pull up. And that way, the Arduino or the microcontroller knows that it needs to use this method rather than just an input like this. In some microcontrollers, the pull down resistor is also included. And so in that case, there's other ways to call it, but to the best of my knowledge in no Arduinos is that an option. So we need to stick to this version. So I hope that explains a little bit about how this is designed and how to implement and design a pull-up resistor within your Arduino and avoid using that um, extra resistor in your layout.